Real Animals Fishing Show is presented by Mosaic, helping the world grow the food it needs. And by Yellowfin Yachts. Hey gang, today I'm in beautiful Titusville, Florida. My good friend Captain Jim Ross is taking me fishing. The bite's been crazy. Whatever you do, don't touch that dial. It's going to be off the hook. made about a four mile run from the boat ramp here in Titusville. Jim's been working a couple of schools of fish on this long bar here. Water's down a little bit. This is a real interesting area when it comes to tides. The uh, tide doesn't move quite as much as it does in some of the other places. So it's interesting how, you know, from one day to day, things change pretty quick. But we found a school of redfish as soon as we got here. They're a little jonesed out this morning, but uh, Hopefully, uh, we'll pick one or two up here. That's incredible. See the boil, where'd they go? They lost the color. They're right behind the bed. Oh, there they are. Well, they made a fracas right there, didn't they? This school of fish that we're trying to fish right now, we're trying to sneak up on, they were a mile and a half from here Monday, you know, last Monday. So they, they moved a pretty long way. They're still, you know, milling around and doing what they do, but they've gone a mile and a half in a, in a week's time. Right. You can't go to this point because at this stage in the tide, the fish are going to stay, you know, be right. staged there. Sure. Um, you can't go to that, that oyster bar. You can't go to that drop off. And you lose, a, that, you lose that trigger effect. Yes. We always get a trigger effect. As yep. soon as the tide starts moving to go out in certain spots, the bite fires off. Exactly. Or it starts to come in in certain spots, the bite fires off. Here, that's not the trigger factor. No, it's more, it's more barometer, moon phase, and actually wind direction can create a lot of bite for you. Um, like this morning, we have a southwest, so we should see some, some pretty decent action, hopefully. Um, we do have a cold front coming in, which is kind of weird for late June. I mean, right. it's the 29th of June. Right. It's odd to say that we're having a cold front coming, but we're, we have a cold front coming of whatever. So we're going to see a fluctuation in the barometer. That may, that may trigger them. Um, but th the thing about it is, is like you were saying, there's no, there's no flow of water trigger. And because there's no flow of water trigger, you can't really predict what the fish are going to do from day to day. Right. And the, the, but the, one of the benefits to it is if the bite's going on, then there's nothing to turn the bite off. You don't run out of tide. Uh, good point. Okay. Sure. So you get a, if you get a good bite going, you can get an all day bite. Right. But then again, if you don't have anything <laughs> going for you, it can nothing be a long turn, day. Nothing there, to know? turn it on. Boy, I picked that up with them right on top of it. They didn't like it one bit, bro. They didn't like that one iota, kid. I don't think I did it wrong. No? I was way out in front of them. Yeah. They didn't like that at all. The, the bigger fish are smart. I mean, the, the fish we're targeting right now at, let's just say, an average of 40 inches. Um, 38 to 40 inches are they're 20 year old fish. Right. They, they've seen every lure. They're smart, yeah. They know every knot. Right. You know, they, they know that these are quantum smoke reels that we have in our hand. <laughs> and uh, you don't just drive up to them and cast at them. It just, that doesn't happen. Right. We're trying to be as stealthy as possible, Use, utilize the wind, utilize the sun, right. and, uh, and make as little noise as possible. Let the boat just drift down into the, into the strike area where you can get a good cast off at them. I love it when they wave at me, except when they don't eat when they do it. They're waving by. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> nice try, chump. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really see this school anymore, Mike. Maybe we'll um, maybe we'll pick up and move and go try and do some uh, some other types of fish. We'll run around and see what else there is to see. All right, I'm in. All right, let's do that. Did you know you do realize it's extremely hard for me to wave goodbye to 40 inch redfish, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we might we might come back and revisit that. The Real Animals Fishing Show, Tip of the Week, is brought to you by Mosaic. Hey gang, one of the true enjoyments for a boat owner is being able to hook your boat up and get on the road for a fishing adventure. A couple things I want you to do before you take off down the road. I want you to make sure that your trailer is securely hitched to the ball of your truck. Even get a lock for it. Make sure that's locked down and safe. Really, really important. Also, make sure your lights are connected. You want to make sure your lights are working. Always go to the back of the boat, do a light check, turn signals, brakes, all that important stuff. Also, make sure your chains are attached to your boat and make sure they're crisscrossed. That's the law. They need to be crisscrossed. Really, really important. Something else I want you to do, I want you to make sure that your strap is secure. I want to make sure that your emergency chain is connected as well. And make sure that your spare tire is properly inflated and in good shape. You never know when you're gonna get a flat on the road. It's a terrible thing to go through. So you wanna make sure you have a jack, things in your truck, and a good spare to get through that event. It's also really, really important that you check the air pressure in your tires. Make sure your tires are in good shape. Make sure there's nothing wrong with them. Make sure your hubs are properly lubed and taken care of. If you get a chance before the fishing season gets started, take it by one of your local trailer places. Let them go through your whole trailer. Make sure your brakes and everything are working properly. It's going to save you a lot of trouble down the road. Like I said, part of the joy of owning a boat is being able to get off on these great fishing adventures. Do yourself a favor. Make sure your tow package and your trailer package is in great shape before you leave the house. It'll be a much better trip. You and your family will enjoy it twice as much. That's your tip of the week. Real Animals Tip of the Week, brought to you by Mosaic. We just uh, traveled just a short ways. Didn't seem like we were getting a lot of love fishing real, real shallow this morning. So Jim ran us over to a deeper area. Here we're fishing in about three, four, five feet of water. This, this type of fishery, this time of year, a little bit deeper water can be advantageous. A lot of times the fish will move off the shallow water into this deeper water, get into a little cooler area. So we'll just see what the morning brings. We're just kind of working our way around. We've got a front coming in. The wind has picked up a little bit. So ahead of this front, the bite should get good in here sometime this morning. We're just waiting to see exactly where all these fish are staged up at. And we'll just keep whacking away at it and see what happens. Dude, the very second it hit the water. <laughs> Seriously. It was game on, huh? The very second it hit the water. It's unbelievable. It took us a little while to find the honey spot, but boy, once we got in them, we got in them. Now, are you using an eighth or are you using a quarter it's ounce? It's a quarter game? ounce. I quarter. almost always throw a quarter unless we're you know, the scenario we were in this morning, fishing the reds really, really shallow. Right, right. Then I'll, then I'll switch up and go to the eighth ounce or a sixteenth, but my ADD kicks in. <laughs> I got to have that quarter ounce. That strike zone for most of the fish in four to five feet of water is going to be that first eight to ten inches just above the grass. I got to have that extra weight of a quarter ounce jig to keep my bait down there because a lot of times I get working it faster than what I should. If you're using an eighth ounce or a sixteenth ounce, it won't get down there to them, you know? Whenever somebody gets hooked up, if another person can cast in behind them, a lot of times there'll be a trout following that first trout. So I'll drop in like that, like he just shook. I'll drop in there and look at that, look at that. See the second fish under him? Look at that. Ladyfish was with him. See that? That's still pretty cool though. I'll yeah. drop back in again. Yeah, they're looking for that first fish to spit out whatever he's got. Oh, there he is again. He came back and hit it. Oh yeah, oh, come on. <laughs> the ladyfish are pecking at the tail because they can see that high chartreuse going. But um, you'll get those, you get, see him, see yep, him there? Sure is. But you'll get those fish ground. following that first hooked fish. And so it's always a good idea to have that second guy casting in there. You know, that, that really holds true for redfish too. Did you there get another right one? There. Look at that. Another trout? Right there. That's pretty cool, huh? Let's see if we can get another one to come up. Sometimes you can get them to come up and, and they'll be right under the first fish. They're like, what's going on? Yeah. 
That's pretty cool. You know, I changed color a little bit and instantly started getting a response. Yeah, sure. You know? Well, color, I think in, in the plastic world, color is everything. It just really is. You got to get that color right. It's got to match the hatch. It's something that they're eating on a regular basis if you want, you know, successful hookups. You may catch one or two on a bad color, but you're not going to get a pile of bite. Look at that. Did you that. get another one I right here? I got another here? one right there. There's another one right under him. When they're schooling like this, they get they get pretty active. Here you go. You can just get our uh, old cane poles out and just sit here and catch them on cane poles. Real Animals Tackle Box presented by CCA Florida and the CCA Star Tournament. In today's Real Animals Tackle Box, Captain Jim and I are using 7 foot 6 inch AR-15 and AR-20 medium heavy fast action rods by Bull Bay Rods, Quantum Cabo 40 and Smoke 40 spinning reels with 15 pound braided line and 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. We were throwing Mirror Lure Marsh Minnows on quarter ounce jig heads and Mirror Lure Little John XLs rigged on weedless weighted bass hooks. Real Animals Tackle Box is brought to you by Quantum, the real choice for the real animals. Strike King, number one in fishing lures. Mirror Lure, the record setters. Ingo Coolers, the first, the best, your last. Bull Bay Rods, combined with original Fuji guides for a difference you can feel. Real Animals Tackle Box presented by CCA Florida and the CCA Star Tournament. I'm going to switch up to the electric chicken. A lot of different bait companies go with this color. It's normally a great trout color. There's so many trout on this flat. I want to try it. I haven't tried this particular color of the marshmallow yet, so let's give it a swing and see if it works in here. The water's a little dirty. Might be just the ticket to uh, pick up a strike from a little bigger trout. Are you a paddle tail guy? For I, I, I like the paddle tails out here. I like the straight tails in the shallows. Okay. Um, unless the fish are waking or backing, mm -hmm. and then I'll just do a straight retrieve paddle tail. And if you find multiple types of baits, that's the best place to fish. Give the fish a little variety in their diet. Well, nobody, nobody wants to go to the same restaurant every day. No, you're right about that. On days like today when we're having to work for our bite because it's summertime and it's hot. We don't have a tide working with us, then the presentation is going to be the whole key. Something we did this morning on those big redfish wasn't presented quite <laughs> properly. Because <laughs> they didn't want anything to do with us this morning. No, I think they were looking for a hollandaise sauce or something on there. So we weren't giving it to them. There's our puffer. Ate half of my marshmallow. This particular puffer is from the Miralure family of puffer fish. Our good friend Eric Bachnick has released from his puffer fish farm. Kind of a cool thing. Big fan of real animals, as we're gonna let them go. Now, are you getting a bunch of big trout up here with these? Well, they're mixed in with the smaller um typically in with the smaller redfish if you find a group of small slot size reds, uh, not those 40 inchers that just kind of snubbed us there. Uh, the, the trout, the 20 to 24 inch trout have been hanging in with them. So it's, it's been fun uh, when, when we get on the, on the smaller schools like that too. You know, I like to cast downwind, but I find a lot of times if you cast across the wind, you get a good sweep too, and you, you get you get more fish that way. I don't like to cast into the wind. No, it just you just don't seem to, to do as good. Wind not central usually. Yeah, that too. To boot, yeah. Well, I think you know here because we don't have current, it's it's more of a wind generated type of a scenario. The fish swim into a current, and if you're pulling your your bait or your lure in exactly the opposite direction, I just don't think the fish. I think they're smart enough to figure it out that it's not it's not right. Right. I get to thinking that there may not be a bigger fish snob on the planet than the Florida angler because our, we get to fish so many days a year. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And our, our, our fisheries are so diverse. 
you know, that we, we get to, you know, I, I know guys that don't want to catch Jack Creval. Really? Really. That's a great fish. Yeah. I mean, it's a great fish. Now, you know, do I want to put one on the table? Yeah. Absolutely not. But it's a great fighting fish. An eight, 10 pound jack, give you all you want. Well, you have to think about it. You know, those big beach jacks, 20, 25, 30 pound jack. A 30 pound jack will pull a 60 pound tarpon backwards all day long, all day. <laughs> all day. Now, just because they don't jump, they don't deserve the same amount of respect right. that the tarpon does. Right. I'm not necessarily convinced I, of that. I agree. That's why I say we get to be fish snobs just the worst because we're so blessed with tarpon and kingfish and, you know, incredible shark fishing and monster redfish. And well, there's no day in the state of Florida where you can't go out and potentially catch a trophy fish right. of some kind. Right. Freshwater, saltwater, there's, uh, there's no day that you can't have that happen for you. Closed captioning brought to you by Gator Ford. Real Animals Hook It and Cook It, brought to you by Rumfish Grill at the Guy Harvey Outpost. I'm at the Rumfish Grill on St. Pete Beach, St. Pete Beach, Florida. I'm with Chef Tyson. Tyson, what are we cooking today? Today we're gonna be doing a whole lionfish curry. Nice. So here I have my lionfish in its whole form. It's already been cleaned of the spines on it. Now when I do this, I do it over a low heat. I don't wanna scorch the curry, but I do wanna brown it, and get some color on it. And I also wanna break down the spices a little bit to kinda of enhance them, get, this, get a little toastiness going. So I'm just gonna put my lionfish down in the pan. We're just gonna let that brown for a little bit. Well, we know how invasive this species is on our reef system out there, so the fact that we can eat them is a good thing. Yeah, here at Rumfish, we're trying to eradicate the invasive species one bite at a time. Amen. All right. Now you can see we got some nice browning in the curry there. I'm gonna start with the curry paste, which is gonna make this stock, the curry stock, if you will, which then cooks down into a curry sauce. So I start with a little onions, a little shallots. I got some finely minced ginger here. I'm gonna add some carrots. They kind of balance out the spice that I use in there from the curry. I have here a curry paste that I make. Okay. I use some curry seasoning, a little tomato paste. I thin it out with a little oil. I'm gonna add my green chilies. Now, in addition to the cayenne that's in there, I add a little extra fresh chilies to it to kind of really start to spice it up now. This is just a simple fish stock, white fish bones, celery, onions, carrots. And now the flavors are really gonna start to come out in that steam. I add a little coconut milk for a creaminess too. Now you just want that to come up, and we're just gonna let it simmer. So now you can see that the fish is cooked, it's firm to the touch, it's hot all the way through. Now to finish it off, I like to just squeeze a little lime juice in there, it'll help brighten it up a little bit. And then I finish it with a little cilantro in there, and we're good to plate. Mm. Just pour the sauce over, it's also gonna, the rice is delicious with the oh, curry really, sauce over really the top. really, smells good. Smells good, looks amazing. Chef Tyson, great job for this recipe and more. Go to our website. Real Animals Hook It and Cook It, brought to you by Rumfish Grill at the Guy Harvey Outpost. We've moved to another flat here, trying to get out of some of those smaller trout, get back into something a little bigger. A little shallower here, some great grass. Jim had a nice fish on and lost him, so I'm gonna switch from my jig head on the marshmallow to something weedless here. See if that don't help us out a little bit. It looks like we got some some nice potholes on this flat, some broken bottom in here, some grass. I mean, what are you looking for, you know, in this estuary that makes you? Well, the reason the reason I stopped here, um, this flat historically holds fish on it the same way that that last flat that we just left, Al although it's half the depth. But the reason that the fish transition through here is there's a little deeper water just to the south of us and there's a little deeper water to the west and to the, the north of it. So it's an area where they're not necessarily working around the edge of the flat. Uh, there's no sharp taper, there's no distinct drop off. It's a very, very gradual drop out there. So they just hop up here, come across, and then drop into that deep water on the other side most of the time. It looks like a transition flat. Mm-hmm, exactly. Swimming at me doing 112, whatever it is. 
trout. Come in quick, little guy. A little better fish though. So I think the I think the hunch was right, maybe, Mike. We got to the outside edge of the grass line and and found more fish there than we did just drifting across the. Yeah, first or second cast again on this edge produced another nice trout. These are the fish that will soon be, good Lord willing, the monsters that you see in all the magazines and stuff that get over here in the Indian River where it seems to be home of the 30 inch trout. What's your biggest trout, Jim? My personal biggest is 32 and a half inches at about 11 and a half pounds. Um, and that's, I mean, that's a respectable fish. You think? But I'll, uh, yeah, but I'll tell you, uh, there's been, this last two years, there have been some fish that have been pushing 34 inches that have been caught, 35 inches that have been caught. I mean, some real monsters over here in the Indian River. So wow. even though I haven't been able to get one that big, they're, they're here and they're catchable. And it's mainly a, a, a top water early morning or, or jerkbait type scenario around spoil islands, drop offs, channel edges, things like that. that uh, that seems, that seems to hold those fish. Anywhere where there's a bait concentration, you've got the opportunity to catch trout over 20 inches though. And so yeah, right. hopefully we'll see that today, you know, to get one into the 30 inch ranges, so that's something special. I don't know what I'd, you'd probably have to carry me to my truck. <laughs> I caught a 30 inch <laughs> trout, I'd lose my mind. Nah, I'm not, you're not catching a 30 incher today. I ain't got that kind of back strength, brother. <laughs> <laughs> We certainly hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. For more great information on booking a charter with one of our captains or on the recipe from our Hook It and Cook It segment, visit our website. I'm Captain Michael Anderson reminding you, whatever you do, don't let your kid be the one that got away. <laughs>